Groovy. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time. Thanks Pleasure. for coming in. Um, just to kick this off, uh, UMF is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things. So who and what during your life and career has inspired you? Oh, it's inspired me, I suppose. There's been, there's been quite a few things, you know, along the way, that little things that have um, given me inspiration to, to do what I've done. But, I mean, initially the first thing that, that got me was, was the competition side of things, you know, just being able to compete. Um, karting is where it started for me, and way, way, way back when. And, you know, the thrill I got from, from being able to, to race, um, you know, this, this little machine and, and yeah. be in control and, and uh, just the, the feeling it gave me was, was the bit that I, you know, just decided I couldn't be without really yeah. in a lot of respects. But, you know, along the way there's been a lot of people that have, that have helped and, and uh, you know, um, given their advice and support and things and family was one and, and then there's been a lot of other people that have been a part of, of being able to take those steps moving forward and, um, you know, without that um, it couldn't have happened. But, um, you know, being close to getting the opportunities and, and being close to some, you know, some people that I've looked up to and that kind of thing and, and um, you know, having being able to gain their respects, you know, that's that's something that inspires you to, to, to keep pushing and going further. But um, it's it, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for sure and but um, you know, an amazing journey. Yeah, and who who were some of those mentors? I mean, have you had some, some people in the sport who have sort of helped I guess drive you along, excuse the pun, and help you out as well. Well, I, I think it, it's not even necessarily those that have uh, had a direct influence, but it's it's the um, the history of some of those people. You know, the likes of the the Bruce McLarens of the world, the Denny Holmes and the Chris Amons and all those yeah. people. And um, you know, I only had the chance to meet Chris Amon um, and just listening to him and talking to him and and uh, you know hearing the stories about their lives and and how they grafted out a. A career and, and a, a place in the sport, you know, those stories are, are, are completely inspiring. But then there's the likes of the Peter Brocks of the world and stuff that I managed to get close to and, and have time with and be teammates with, you know, seeing people like him and listening and watching and, and learning um, back in my early days from those kinds of guys uh, was just a, you know, a, a pretty fortunate experience, I suppose. Yeah, and what do you reckon it was back when you were eight to get into that karting, you know? Why, why did you get started doing it in the first place? Well, it was, it was really just um, my dad and I um, spending time together and we ended up uh, just, uh, I suppose, by chance, just ending up at the local kart track a lot, many, many years ago. And um, it, was, it just ended up being something that he and I uh, got involved in. Okay. Um, so nothing, there was no you know, preconceived sort of plan or, yeah, 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 or anything, yeah. it just happened that way and, and uh, we sort of realised, I mean he always had an uh, um, enjoyment out of watching motorsport, he never was involved in any way, shape or form, but um, uh, he en enjoyed the sport watching and, and then this, the karting thing gave us an opportunity to sort of have that little connection with it more so and get our, yeah. our hands dirty. Okay, and when, when looking back over, over your career, I mean, what are some of the lessons that you reckon you've learned that have taught you huge things about how to win and how to do well in the sport in the first place? Um, it's, it's just incredible perseverance. I mean, motorsport's incredibly difficult because you're not relying on just you as a physical sort of um, item. You're, you're one part of, yeah. of, of you know, the puzzle because there's a mechanical unit yeah. that takes all sorts of work and effort and, and you know, to... to to give you the opportunity, and so you've got to you've got to uh, learn so much more about driving uh, than 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 just driving. You've got to understand the the mechanical component and and what's the, the technical side of things, and um, so it's it, it's a it's a real challenge. So it's um you've got to you know you've got to delve deeper than just I want to be a race car girl. That's all well and good, but there's so many other parts to it. There's the sponsorship. There's the raising the financial side of things. There's the, the cost associated with it is is massive so you know it, you're constantly learning and, and yeah. especially from this part of the world um, unless you know unless there's the, the budget's unlimited you've got to go and yeah. find a way some other way to be able to, to raise the, the funding to, to go ahead and do it because you're just not reliant on how much ability you've got you've got to showcase your ability and it doesn't it doesn't involve just putting on your shoes and and uh, grabbing a rugby ball and, and going out in the field and yeah, showing how yeah, good yeah. you are with your sidestep it's you know you've got to somehow put yourself in the position which is on the racetrack to showcase the abilities you've got, and that just that takes a lot of a lot of um, 
effort outside just you as a, as a physical being. Okay, and just talking about that persistence and perseverance, I mean, when you're at the sort of peak of your training skills, I can imagine it would have been pretty intense. So what was it sort of like when you were training towards a big, a big race or something, you know? What, well, I mean, the training is really the racing. I mean, you 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 know you don't get a you don't get the opportunity to, to go out every day and, and drive a racing car. You know okay. that's not how it's done. You I mean you you uh, when you're karting, okay, you go away on weekends and you do a bit of practice, that kind of thing. It's it's a little bit more unlimited. But when it gets to the the serious side, when you actually get to um, you know racing in a competition in a car, um, you know at an event, uh, you know you you're very limited by what you're allowed to do, and and so the the, the, the skills and everything come from time and experience and yeah. doing different facets of the sport and to, doing the stepping stones and, and um, you know, going through the, the motions and it takes time because you, know, you don't just go from racing a kart to the, the top level, yeah. you've got to build yourself up and you've got to get a reputation, you've got to prove, prove yourself in, in different levels um, to, to then hopefully get in a position where, where you become a, a desired or wanted commodity you know for a race team yeah. so you know the uh, in that respect you know you say you, you take those steps and hopefully do and take the opportunities that presented and and run with them and and, and maximize them every single time you get that chance okay. and that's what then hopefully will give you the next chance the next step to you know to, to move move up the ladder yeah yeah is there a lot of like i can imagine really technical stuff as well that sort of makes that difference between you know the second place and the win i can imagine you've got to sort of memorize the track and you've got to you know tiny things make a big difference so what would you say some of those are in the actual physical racing you know what are some stuff that you well, unfortunately, it's, uh, it'd be nice if it was that simple, but okay. um, it's a lot more difficult than that because of depending on the you know the the class that you're racing, the cars, uh, it, it, you know, it just comes down to time. You know, you, the, the first race uh, in a brand new sort of uh, class of racing against people that have been doing it for five, ten years. You know, you're not going to go and often most 99.9% of the time you're not gonna you know never race in that class against those people and, and okay. go and dominate yeah you're going to have to work your way through because because no matter how good you think you are um, experience does count for a lot so you know there, there's a, it's a it's a never-ending process you never you never can learn everything there is to learn and and it, it's just a time process and unfortunately it comes down to money and it right. comes down to what you yeah, can afford yeah. and what you've got and is it the same as everybody else's? And, yeah, yeah. and you know, um, so there's so many parts and components to it. Um, you know, it's, it's like most sports, you, you know, you build up through, you know, the older you get, the more experience you get, the, the levels of the sport. You know, you go from, from playing, um, you know, at school, you go play at a club, and then you go, um, you play for your, for your local region, and then you get to play for, um, you know, New Zealand or whatever. You know, it, there's all steps to it, and, and our sport, motorsport's no different, except there's just the, the different classes and the ratings, I suppose, based on the popularity, based on the money involved, based on the, um, the series. If you compare V8 supercars, you know, that's, that's the pinnacle of the sport in this part of the world, and that's just one step then to a, you know, potentially even bigger things and then yeah. there's in New Zealand you know everything's pretty much based around a, a club sort of environment there's nothing too professional really yeah. um, there's a lot of people spend a lot of money on the sport but you know to get outside New Zealand you have to race at a fairly high level here but then when you leave New Zealand you're starting again from scratch yeah. and it's um, it comes down to so many different components and, and understanding many technical things but also learning tracks and, and uh, learning little tiny uh, parts to making yourself go fast, which includes working with engineers, working with data, working with you know so many things to to be good at what you do and cover all those those little um, those little areas. So it's a it's a massive undertaking, and um, you know there's ways to fast track it. Often it comes down to you know how much money you've got. Okay. So what do you reckon? What would you say is sort of I guess one of the one things from your personal performance that that you reckon allowed you to go ahead and win the Bathurst 1,070 times, you know, what would you say? Well, I was always, I was always um, fortunate enough to be involved with very good teams yeah. and very good, you know, very good in environments that, that provided me with the tools to complement, you know, the, the skills, all those yeah. kind of things. So, you know, you can't do it by yourself. Um, you can't, you know, turn up in Australia and go and race for supercars by yourself. You need, you know, there's, there's, there's a big organisation, there's a lot of... Um, uh, planning and there's a lot of 
time that gets spent on logistical sides of things, technical things, building race cars, you know, engineers that, that know what they're talking about, that you can work with and understand and get a good rapport with. And so it's communication, it's, um, you know, there's, there's, there's huge amounts of things that you need to put together to make it happen. And fortunately, the times that, you know, I was successful in Australia, and uh, well, certainly if we use Bathurst as an example, you know, I had a great group of people Okay. Um, supporting me and and me doing my job at the best I could. Yeah, and um, I guess conversely, whether technically or otherwise, is there any was there anything that over your sort of professional racing career you worked really hard to try and master that you just always really struggled with that one aspect of of the, of the racing? Uh, I don't know. That's a difficult question to answer. Um, listen, there's there's always things that you can be better at. Yeah, you know, if you if you believe that um, you know you. Um, after a period of time, you know, I've got nothing more to learn, I'm yeah, yeah. as good as I can be, okay. well then, you know, you're going to get beaten. Yeah. You, you're not going to, you know, achieve at the, continue to achieve at that high level. Yeah, You've yeah. got to keep working on it. The, the best that there's ever been never, you know, they never took it for granted. They don't, they don't sit around sort of resting on their laurels and, yeah. and um, sort of saying, well, you know, um, waiting for everybody to catch up. Yeah. You continuously push. So. Um, you know, you're, you're always working on, on the little things and there's, you know, the list of stuff always all the way through my career that you, you continue to work on and you, and then you work on something that highlights something else. Okay. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's just like anyone worth who is trying to be elite in any, any sport, I'm sure that they'd all agree that there's always something that they, they need to be um, pinpoint, you know, focusing on yeah. and, and working with, with their coaches or with whoever it is, you know, psychologically, um, or just their fitness and, and, you know, focusing on one specific little tiny thing in their training that, that makes it makes it better. For us, you know, we've got a whole uh, uh, massive realm of information that is gathered at the race car, which shows basically exactly what we're doing. And we're constantly looking at that and, and analyzing the bits compared to other information, teammates and all that kind of thing where you might be a little deficient that you need okay. to work on. So, you know, there's, the list is long and, it, and it, you know, you're always trying to reduce the amount, but um, that's that's the difficult thing to do. Yeah, and with those super long sort of endurance races, I mean, you know, when sometimes when you're trying to laser focus on one thing for 10 minutes, it can be pretty exhausting. So when you're going for sort of hours on end, how do you keep that focus? I mean, is it Well, you, if you don't, you, you'll you yeah. make a mistake and you'll crash. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you'll, um, you know, someone will pass you. No, it's yeah. just, I mean, that's what you have to do. You know that's what you have to do. You, yeah. you know, you take one corner at a time and, okay. and you, you know that you want to maximise it the best you can. I mean, if, you, if you're not focused and, and you're not going to do that, well, then you'll pay the price and, yeah. and basically you won't, you won't be there. Yeah, you know? yeah. So um, you don't have a choice. It's, it's like any, as I say, any elite sports person when they're you know, doing what they're paid to do or doing what they, they choose to do, um, you know, you've, you've, you can't rest for a second or or you'll get beaten yeah, yeah absolutely. um so it's 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 just what you get used to it's it's you know what your body learns and and it's muscle memory and all those kinds of things and what your mind gets used to and and uh, something that just becomes part of what you do yeah and what did it feel like for that first time i guess standing on that podium winning winning bathurst for the first time was it oh yeah you know my first my first race my first car winning my first kart race yeah um putting it all in perspective of you know it's all about the people that you are racing against and beating. I mean, um, you know, uh, you used to, you know, you struggle to get excited about um, something that um, you might have perceived to be a lower level, you know, but, you know, you, it's all about achievement along the way and, and gathering those results and, and gathering that experience. But, you know, when you get to that time where you see the pinnacle and, and that is the pinnacle of the sport, yeah. um, you know, all that hard work and all those other results and, and no matter what it was along the way, you know, it, it, it all comes together to, to give you that opportunity. And, and um, you know, when you see the pinnacle and you're standing there and you've achieved it, it's, it's an incredible feeling. And that's, that's what it's all about, is always trying to um, improve and also trying to, you know, be the best um, at what you're doing at the time. And, uh, you know, in this part of the world, uh, the V8 Supercar Championship and Bathurst and those and the likes, you win a race in, 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 that, in that league um, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. But when you get there, I mean, did was it always that feeling of sort of huge satisfaction or was it sometimes like a bit, you know, you didn't really know what to work towards next and there wasn't that next level, you know? Oh, well, I mean, I, I wanted to for a long time, wanted to go further afield and go to overseas and, you know, yeah. I wanted to race in America and do okay. other things. But, 
Um, you know, it's all about opportunities that, that are presented and, and what at the at the time with all the information you've got, the decisions you make based on, yeah. you know, where you see the future. And um, you know, there was I always had you know aspirations for other things and more, but at the end of the day, weighing it all up, you know, the opportunity to to um, be you know racing in this part of the world and and part of one of the biggest championships or strongest championships you know that we've that we've ever seen mm. um to uh, to be a part of that and competing in it on a, on a regular basis was um you know was a pretty good opportunity and and um you know i was happy to accept that that's what i needed to focus on yeah awesome okay and just before we get into it a bit more about i guess a bit of advice for one to get into the sport what would you say were some of the i guess your struggles along the way that that you think shapes who you are today and in, in, in your career uh you know we um I think uh, some of the stuff, you know, which dictated a little bit of the direction is, is the financial side of things. I mean, it's yeah. for, for every, anyone in motorsport, um, or for a lot of people, most people in motorsport, the, the, the one of the biggest factors that determines, you know, where you go and, and, we, and we, what you achieve is the financial side because the sport is just so incredibly expensive yeah. and uh, it's not changing. It's, if anything, it's getting, getting harder because yeah, of that. So, yeah. You know, that's that's one of the hard things. Um, you know, it's it is unfortunately it's the right place, right time. It's um, you know, making decisions of you know, certainly without doubt made made some decisions that um, you know, probably didn't work out the way I thought they would and, and potentially if you'd gone down another path at the time when you had a choice, it could have been very different. But, you know, you never know those things and you're not gonna know. But um, you know, it's 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 also putting yourself in that spot to be able to make those decisions. That's a pretty good position to be in you know yeah. to be able to um, and make a choice um, and a lot of people don't get the chance to make a choice you know the yeah. it's, it's one way and one way only so you know it's uh, there's there's always factors and, and you're always working away on trying to to do everything as good as you can but yeah. you know it's I would say no one's ever done it as good as they can yeah yeah, yeah. so so for a young person wanting to get started who's had no previous experience or um, I guess no family sort of history in it what would you say is a good first step to take for I was to? without question you know kart sport you know yeah. racing karts that's yeah. how I started and uh, that's how you know the majority of people get, get cracking and, and you know, and who are competitive and, and um, compete at a high level in motorsport. You know, they're, they're pretty much the start was, was racing in karts. Okay, and are there any areas that you see people sort of going wrong time and time again that you notice at that early stage? Uh, I think it's um, a little, I think the biggest thing that happens is that um, people already have uh, potentially too big a plan laid out way too early, you know. Um, and it's, that's, and, some will say, well, you've got to have a plan, you've got to plan. Well, you do have to plan, but but you don't want to be uh, too many steps ahead because things yeah. do change. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of... Uh, motorsport's become quite glamorous, I suppose. It's become, you know, uh, much more mainstream yeah. in this part of the world. We see a lot lot more of it around the place. It's uh, it, it seems to be something that, um, you know, the aspiration has become stronger. Okay. Um, but the difficulties of getting into the game uh, have become probably tougher, right. um, especially at that level where it gets to where you are a professional making a career out of it. So yeah. it's it's one of those ones where it's it's a tricky. You've got to you've got to you've got to have that plan, but the, you don't want to be be um, you know eight years old racing carts mm -hmm. and and looking at um, IndyCar when you're when you're eight years old. You know you yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to you've got to enjoy take it. the steps okay. and and you know enjoy it. And, and and love what you're doing, and and you know take the opportunities when they present themselves. It's, it might be probably sound. It might say, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense because you do need to have goals and all that kind of thing. Well, you do, yeah. but they change too. You've got to be prepared yeah, yeah, to change yeah. depending on the situation. Um, and because it, it is just such a tough tough game, and yeah. and you know, be trying to be the best in any sport is is going. You know, some people are going to achieve it, and others are going to give it just as much as that next person. But it's not going to happen for them because of many reasons, and it's, everybody's built up differently. So, you know, um, some have those they, 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 those X factors, and, and others don't. But um, uh, it's it's just a tricky game because you're so reliant on having this piece of machinery. Yeah. You know, it's not just about your, the so footy boots, or it's not just around. about you. You know, your um, your running shoes, or your you know your javelin, or your shot put, or whatever, or yeah. so many other examples, thousands, or your canoe, or your kayak, or whatever, and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff. There's there's this piece of mechanical 
engineering that has an engine, it has wheels, it has drivetrain, it has suspension, it has all these components. Yeah. One, they cost a lot of money. Two, they, they're, it's a bit of a, a, a um, black art and making it work. Yeah, sometimes it's hard not to work. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and is, is age just a number in the sport or is there a peak age, do you reckon? Or? Uh, it, it depends on the, um, uh, the, the type of motorsport that you're talking about. Okay. Um, some has a bigger effect. Age has a bigger effect than some, some of them and, and not so much in others. Yeah. Um, you know, experience place for a lot you know it yeah. really really does but you know it always gets to a point where where that uh, youthful enthusiasm and stuff can start to you know um take over from that experience and you know there's there's a lot of talk about age and there's a lot of uh, forms of the sport around the place formula one specifically i suppose where where it seems that you know the um the drivers are getting younger and younger and younger and younger yeah. um be it supercars um you know there's some young drivers in there there's guys that are 40 in there okay. um who are still winning races and competing so it's it physically it uh, plays a bit of a part more so some right. of the the more physical forms of motorsport yeah um you know that it, it can start to to be um uh, a bit more um reliant on youth or focused on youth um whereas there's there there's other forms of it i tell you that you know there's clearly clearly there's guys that have you know been around for a very long time who might be 10 15 years older than than the younger guy 20 years older who are still showing them how to get it done so um it, it, it's dependent on the form of the sport okay and what's next for you if you got some some plans for the next next few years oh yeah listen you know i'm um, still involved in in the motorsport side of things with, with more so on the media side these days um, which you know is, is a good transition but you know you still miss the, the competition and it'd be nice to be able to, to still uh, do the odd odd race yeah. um, probably not too serious I suppose yeah. um, the serious stuff you know you have to be um, you know doing a lot of racing or you know keeping really really focused on the driving which obviously with what I'm doing at the moment it's not the case so much um, so it'd be good to still get, get behind the wheel and have some fun but um, you know, the focus at the moment is uh, more so on that um, that media side. Yeah, Jeremy Clark, some replacement maybe? No, 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 I'm on media, not um, not superstar, um, <laughs> biggest TV show in the world kind of thing. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so just... Now I don't have his wit, humour or intelligence. <laughs> okay, um, we've just got a few quick five questions to finish off. Um, I guess, how's, how's it changed, you know, motorsport in, in your time? Like, from when you first got into it to now, what's changed the most? Uh, the popularity. Okay. Uh, and I sort of say that the, I say that the, it was always popular, but it's become more mainstream. So the access to it in many other mediums has is, is become you know enormous. So I think um, people understand, even those that aren't fans of the sport, um, you know, would have some sort of idea of it now. Yeah. Whereas previously, you had to be a real motorsport fan to to have any knowledge or or understanding. Whereas now, I think there's more people would would uh, know a little bit about it but may not you know follow it but they would know a little bit more about it yeah uh, this this is a hard question because as you said before you, you never know where you're going to end up with different pathways but if there's one thing that you sort of look back and say might have done that differently is there something you you often think back to that you would, you would do differently if you had your time again? um listen I, you know if you had your time again there's certainly no regrets because it's yeah. just the way it is yeah exactly um yeah. I, you know there's a couple of decisions that clearly i would have made differently which okay. which probably would have taken me off on a different tangent and um you know potentially led to a, a stronger period um, in my career, later in my career. Okay. Um, but, you know, it was all very much learning, and as I said, it's all about the, the information that you've got at the time and, and yeah. making the best, making the call based on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, that's just the way it goes. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that um, I would have, I would, if I got my second chance, I'd, I'd try and do a little bit different. Yeah. So um, what would be those, those summary, I guess, and, and summary three bits of advice for people wanting to, to take that sport to the next level? Oh, my goodness. Um, that's, that is pretty tricky. Um, you know, it's, you've got to, you've got to uh, obviously put in, put in the time and put in the effort. I mean, it's, it's asking, asking questions, you know, talk to people that are knowledgeable about it, ask, you know, and... Uh, ask around. I mean, there's there's a lot of people with a lot of experience, um, and most people are pretty willing to to offer up. But be you know be very wise about it. Look at what the the whole the the uh, how big of of a commitment it is to try and you know make that step. Um, yeah. So you know make sure that you you are doing your homework uh, around the best paths to try and take and 
it is important to stick to a path, right? Yeah. Okay, you don't, as I said, you, you're going to have your goals and that kind of thing. You don't want to be looking too far ahead, especially in the early part. I mean, mm-hmm. once once you, if you are committed to it and you're having a few breaks and you're having the opportunities to um, to take some steps, well, then you can really start to sort of probably get a, a firm direction on where you're going. Okay. And um, at that point, you know, you, you do need to focus on trying, on, on not going off on a whole lot of tangents, but, yeah. but really going, well, if that's what I want to do, you know, there's going to be a time to, if you've made it through certain levels that you can probably um, really start to focus in on it. But you know, that's that's you know something that you've got to be have clear in your mind. Um, uh, but I think one of the hardest things is 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 making sure that you you're savvy about what you need uh, what you need to be able to give back to people too. If you if you're relying on sponsorship and that kind of thing to make it, it is about um, being able to. Uh, offer back. I mean, it, sponsorships are a really strange thing. I mean, it, it, people need value if you're going to be able to, to um, you know, be able to get that money to be able to go and go racing and maybe become a, a professional race car driver. It's 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 being savvy about that kind of stuff and being and understanding that if people give you help, you know, um, you, you need to need to be able to give give something back. But also, um, you know, there's so many things to learn down that path on. Um, on being able to provide, you know, uh, that that return, but also uh, learn about, you know, what it takes to to be able to be good at, you know, the sponsorship side of things, talking to the media, all those kinds of things. There's, there's so many parts to it that you've got to pick up, and it yeah. and it's important that you you know you take note from the guys that have been doing it a long time and and understand it and really become an all encompassing sort of unit, not just a driver, but someone that can that can deliver on all aspects. And race teams really look look towards that as well. So right. okay. so those points are really important, um, having those goals um, and, and having that dedication and commitment to it because you're going to you're going to need it. You're going to need it big time. Okay. And what's the fastest you've ever gone in a car? Oh um, I don't know, somewhere somewhere in the three hundred and something kilometer hour range. Yeah. Not uh, not as fast as some people have gone, but um, probably probably up around three hundred and twenty odd k's an hour. Yeah. Like and just before we finish off, I mean, is there something that that you believe to be true that not many people have ever agreed with you on? <laughs> a lot of people don't agree with a lot of things I have to say, but um, uh, goodness, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I mean, yeah. I so I'm pretty opinionated about um, what's required here in New Zealand to to lower the road toll, especially yep. with young people, and, and there's a lot of people that disagree with that. I yep. I got. Um, uh, there was a fair few uh, comments about uh, a few years ago when we were fighting the war on fitness changes. There's a okay. lot of people that didn't agree with uh, what we had to say about that, or yeah. what I had to say about that. So, you know, that's okay. You're allowed opinion. Yeah, people absolutely. are entitled to their opinions. Uh, yeah. What I often say is, you know, people are entitled to them as long as they agree with mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, to finish off, I mean, what would the, what would the 16 year old Greg Murphy think of the man you've become today? <laughs> um, oh, he'd probably be uh, probably be a little bit. What about most of the men? Some of the men. That I've become, but um, he'd be a bit surprised probably that um, I was able to, you know, able to achieve or able to get to being, you know, a uh, race car driver and a, you know, a professional race car driver because at 16, that just, um, you know, I know that that was not even in my thought process. I didn't think that was that was possible at all. Yeah, awesome. So last question, uh, Murph, can you look down this camera here and tell us what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you got me on that one. My wise words. Well, um, I think you, you know, uh, it's one of those things. You you make you make your own luck. I don't I don't believe I don't believe in luck. You you know, there's there's plenty of, plenty of people out there that probably uh, believe that someone someone else should owe them or um, be uh, giving them something. But you know, everything everything out there is is there for the taking, and you've just got to put the hard work uh, hard work in to achieving those things and um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, um, you can't uh, can't die trying, oh, without, without trying. Awesome, thanks very much. Appreciate Cheers. It. Cheers.